Hey guys, Keith here. Just thought I would do a real quick tutorial to show you how you can get a code behind file on the back of a resource dictionary. Okay, this is our finished project. Um, this is what it looks like. We have a main window and that main window has a list box that has an item template called test data template, which is found in our dictionary. And that dictionary just has that data template which has a grid, a stack panel orientated horizontally with two label controls and a button. And that button has a click event called button click, which is handled in the code behind file that I'm going to show you how to create. Okay. Uh, the first thing you want to do is open up Visual Studio 2017 is what I'm using. And you want to create a new WPF project. Just go to project and then under Windows desktop WPF app. Okay, once you do that, you'll have something that looks similar to mine with exception of the dictionary one. And what you'll want to do is open up your main window, drop a list box control on there. You can size it any way. We're not really worried about the UI. That's not what this tutorial is over. So um, I just set basically the item template to a dynamic resource called data template and then horizontal content alignment stretched. And then I then put a um, source or a pointer to that dictionary uh, through a merge dictionaries resource dictionary. Okay. So next you want to do is you want to go to tools, extension and updates, and go to online and search for file nesting. So this will be using an extension from Mads Christensen, which should be at the top there. And you just click on that and hit the download button which mine's already installed so I don't have that and you'll have to restart Visual Studio okay so after that's done we want to create a dictionary so we do that by going to file new hit the wrong button um, actually let's do it this way we just click on the actual project and just add new item and then go to WPF and resource dictionary and then you'll just add it okay once the resource dictionary is added, the next thing you want to do is click on that project again and add a class. Okay. And then that class is going to be the same name as your dictionary that you're working on. So mine is dictionary two and yours would most likely be dictionary one. Okay. And I actually spelled that wrong. So I don't know. Okay. That just kept the, the CS there. Um, so let me rename that there. Okay. And we'll rename that file to match type. Okay. So next thing we want to do is we want to public and we'll do a partial. Okay. And this is going to extend from resource dictionary. All right, and we'll have to bring that in to, I believe, yes. Okay, so we're using system windows, and now this is where we actually, oh, the next thing, I'm sorry, I almost forgot. The next thing you want to do is actually go into the XAML, and then we want to point to that class. So that's going to be the X class, and then this is WPF app one and dictionary okay so that should be it you just put that up there now we actually once you have that extension installed you should see it here file nesting you just click on the class do file nesting nest item and it'll show you dictionary too and it's that easy okay so what I want to do is just take what is in dictionary one here this code and I want to copy it to the dictionary too okay just like that now we go to dictionary two and again I'm going to copy this stuff right here this button click event and I'm going to copy that to dictionary two and the one last thing that I have for mine to actually operate is I need to change that to point to dictionary two okay so in dictionary two we will just say hello people so you know 
that it's coming from that one. And there you go. And that's it. I hope that helps out somebody. If you like my videos, please subscribe and I'll see you later.